Hi, it's Joe for GAK, and I'm here in our shop in Brighton with Jamie Stillman, the mastermind behind Earthquaker Devices FX. Um, thanks very much for stopping by the shop. Thanks for having me. Uh, we just wanted to kind of pick your brains on everything Earthquaker Devices and sort of to find out a bit of an insight as to how the brand came to be right. and how you came to be like pushing the boundaries of effects <laughs> pedals. Um, so I guess first of all, the last few effects you've you've released, mm -hmm. the, the space spiral delay, mm -hmm. the uh, the reverb, what's the reverb? Transmitter. The transmitter reverb, mm -hmm. and of course the eagerly anticipated data corrupt. Yes. Um, have all been probably the weirdest things that Earthquake have put out in a while. Or yeah, at least certainly with the reverb and the delay, they've been conventional effects that have been that have very unique controls. Yeah. Um, is that now an aim of Earthquaker Devices? Is the idea to just make strange and unusual stuff? <laughs> is, that the, is that what the future has in store? No, not really. I kind of go all over the place. I think that like, when I play guitar, I'm much more traditional. So okay. like, I typically play with just like an overdrive and a fuzz pedal and a basic delay and things like that. But I do like to experiment with sounds uh -huh. and like designing pedals. To me, it's a lot of fun when you can go out there. And like all those pedals have been like even more out there before and I'd like dial them all back to like, well, what is the most useful controls that need to be on this thing? And right. like, can it be musical in all settings to somebody? And right. then, you know, that's what I, I like to sit in there. But I also still work on like, uh, working on overdrives to me is almost more of a challenge to really? like get like a good just sound. To be unique? Yeah, just to be, to have it be unique or just be traditional and get like a traditional like, nice sound it's it's hard to make something distort which really you're breaking a thing right. <laughs> and make it like pleasing to the ears um so i still i mean i still work on all kinds of things like okay. that in between all those though we released the eruptor which is just a oh, of course, fuzz yeah. pedal. so that was like a pretty standard effect but even i feel like even with the standard stuff i tend to kind of go out there like the eruptor is 10 times louder when you turn it on <laughs> but in my mind and you know, if you're playing through a cranked amp, that volume pushes the amp reacts with the fuzz and that's what makes that pedal so cool. With the data corruptor, I, I didn't think we'd ever see anything like more bonkers than the Rainbow Machine. Yeah. I thought that was, and I think that has been since since you guys made it, the height of this is the weirdest effect you can probably buy. Yeah. Is was the data corruptor designed to outdo the Rainbow Machine? Whilst they're very different things. <laughs> it, yeah, they are very different. I guess I didn't think about it that way. Uh, the Rainbow Machine, I think, is the only pedal. Like it's the only pedal that I think of as like way out there. Like I know that that pedal is kind of bananas. Yeah, yeah. That and the other ones I, th I think are pretty like, I know, I think they're totally useful and normal. <laughs> do, you think, do you think the Rainbow Machine was kind of like the, uh, an effect that made it, was, did that progress Earthquaker massively? Do you think that yeah. was like the first thing? That yeah, really I think it was definitely the first pedal that was like sort of polarizing that we did where people right. were like, that's amazing or that's garbage and no one can ever use it. So like that, I think that that like little, like little things like that, when you see them, like they, they make people really interested a lot of times. So I think that that was kind of a turning point for us. I also, I made that pedal, I kept it on a breadboard, like the, where I designed it right. for like a year. And I would show it to people and be like, I don't, I don't know about this thing. And they'd be like, that's crazy. Yeah. You should put that out. I mean, I'm very, very happy that you did. <laughs> yeah. it, 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 it made being weird so much easier yeah. on effects. But actually for anyone watching who doesn't know what the rainbow machine is, it would be great if you could try to explain it. <laughs> well, it's a, it, the basis of the pedal is it's a polyphonic harmonizer. It does a third up to a fourth down. And then it has a secondary option that does octaves up and down of that. And it also has a delay in it. <laughs> and you can turn on a button called magic and there's a control for the magic. And what the magic does is feed all those pitches together. And it can do like everything from, you know, just the octaves to a chorus. And it's almost like a poly chorus kind of sound. And then what I call magic wand noises, like these crazy pitch stabs. 
But I've seen, I mean, it's one of those pedals too where people, when I watch other people use it, they kind of teach me things right. about it that I didn't even know. Because you can dial it back as well. You yeah, can, you can I, use it I, quite conventionally. I almost always use it as a chorus, right. which if you set that pitch control like right at noon, maybe it just a hair off, up or down, it'll be pitched down or pitched up chorus and you can mix those voices in to give like a poly sound. And then you can use that magic switch to like get it to climb or dive real quick. And I almost always use it that way. Cool. Which is a totally normal, like no <laughs> one would ever know it was the rainbow machine. Right. And I'm shocked that people don't know that that sound exists in it because it's a really good chorus sound. Yeah. So. Um, is, is that the pedal you're most proud of or what is the pedal that you're most proud of creating for? For earthquake. I don't know. The Arpanoid, the Arpanoid is something that like I had thought of forever, and like I, you know, worked with a, somebody who was really good at programming, and like we went back and forth over and over again, and like I wanted something like that forever, right. and you know, had people be like, well, I don't think we can do that, and then like when we finally, when I finally got there, I was like, that's amazing. Now what am I gonna do with this thing? So like it was like, you know, it's everything that I wanted out of the and it also like sort of challenged me to figure out how to use it after I made it. <laughs> right. <laughs> so that that's one that I, I think I'm probably the most proud of. I think. Have um have you ever made a pedal by accident? Has anything ever occurred? Or all in... by accident. <laughs> uh, let's see. Bit Commander was actually the Bit Commander was made on the way to the uh, organizer. Right. Okay. So it was sort of my first attempt at doing like an octave okay. pedal. And it was like, this is really cool, but it's more monophonic synth. And I was, you know, kind of just trying to experiment with all different ways to do octaves. And uh, the processor that's used in the organizers is getting too nerdy too quickly, so I'll dial it back. <laughs> just had come out, and like I had just found it or whatever, and uh, found, you know, that was more like what I was aiming for, some yeah. sound like that. So that one. Um, I know there's another one that's just slipping my mind. I, I end up finding things on the way a lot of times. Right. Like I'll something like with the data corruptor, I've there's a, another thing that I have that like was really cool on its own but didn't fit in into there. So like that's a really recent thing that I can remember. But there's been a couple quite a few things that like I landed on in the middle or right. on the way to something. Yeah. And um, Afterneath was kind of an accident too. Oh really? Oh really. Oh, good. Man, that's the best a one. Really good accident. That's a great accident. Yeah. <laughs> um, you've been, or well, Earthquaker have been known for, or what well, you have done in the past, secret things hidden in the pedals. You had Nick Reinhardt do some doodles yeah, on the inside the, of the a pedal doodles. Yeah. So you'd never, you'd never know if you got a Nick Reinhardt doodled pedal mm -hmm. unless you take the the back plate off. Yeah. He... Have you ever done that? Before, was that the first time you'd done that? Uh, Have we, you ever hidden any other things that people <laughs> might be able to find, which would mean we should all take the backs off of our... Yeah, we've hidden all kinds of things. Ah, right, excellent. There's a bunch of gold coins in one somewhere. There you go, buy uh, Earthquaker pedals now and you can find gold coins in the back plate. Yeah. You heard it here first. No, our, uh, our shippers, um, and boxers, uh, Ram and Sam, they didn't like, they just pick randomly to doodle in some things here. And then we kept posting them online and people were getting really excited about yeah. all those things. <laughs> And then Nick, we had Nick in as a guest pedal builder for a day, and then he drew in all the backs of his. Amazing. But there's no real, I mean, we know where they went, but there's no telling where they, they possibly are. Right, okay. So you have to Surprise. take the back off your pedal to find out if you've got one of those. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Jamie, for coming down to GAC and oh, for, for having, having a chat with us. And, uh, and yeah, we hope you enjoy the rest of your time over here. Thanks. Cheers.